yeah guys we are back week six against the anime kid james um and here we are guys he is actually one and four having a rough season he's a much ba better battler than a one win record would suggest but here we are um we're three and two he's one and four and um Finishing off this regular season, I have some tough matchups coming up, I believe, against that boy Toph, um, Rory John, and the Prince Aldo, so I would ideally like to win this match. Um, give me some cushion in case we take an L or two to finish off our season. But anyways, this guy, he has a pretty interesting roster, some heavy hitters, and then some defensive pieces at the very bottom of his roster. Um, his two Megas are excellent. Two Megas that were on my draft plan, actually. Um, he got Mega Slowbro, one of the best Megas in this league format. I say that because you're not forced to Mega Evolve it turn one. So you could actually use it as regular Regenerator Slowbro and use that as a pivot and then Mega Evolve later on. So Mega Slowbro is, is a top Pokemon in this whole league. So. Um, he has Mega Slowbro, and then he has Mega Beedrill, who's also a really good Pokemon itself. One of the fastest pivots you could ask for. Um, and then he has some really good Pokemon, some threats that I have used in the past. Um, and I fully expect some of them to come this game. I'm talking about Tapu Koko should always come. Heatran should always come from my Mega Mawile. Um, I'm expecting Hippowdon. Even though my Pokemon doesn't have too many physical attackers, Hippaldon is pretty decent here. If he could uh, dodge my Primarina, I guess. Um, looking at my team, um, Gliscor kind of goes in, so I should expect if Hippaldon or Skarmory don't come, I fully expect Inteleon to come. He might be in trouble if he doesn't bring Inteleon now that I think about it, because he needs to take out my Gliscor. He needs to take out that thing, so I really like my team build going into this match. Um, I like my odds for this match, honestly. So, um, yeah, his team has some good Pokemon, but not the best chemistry, I would say. I, I think it's a little too defensive, if you ask me. Plus, that Heatran sprite's a little too low. <laughs> oh, um, anyways, yeah, that kind of threw me off right now as I'm talking. But anyways, I think the team's really top-heavy, and his bottom half of the roster needs some work. But I like what I'm bringing this week. We're bringing Mega Mawile, who looks decent, I guess, Sucker Punch, as long as we get rid of um, Heatran. Gliscor goes in. Gliscor is really good. Um, some of his Pokemon that concern me are physical attackers, so I think this is Gliscor's week to shine, honestly. It helps me stop uh, Mega Beedrill. Uh, kind of stops Tapu Koko. I don't know. Now that I look at it, his team likes physical attackers as well. So um, This week, I also like Stack King. Um, he went in last week in his debut. And I think he could also put in the work this week. Uh, bringing, we're going to have like Fire Blast for Skarmory. Earthquake. Most of his roster does not like Earthquake. So he has Earthquake. We also have Pursuit for things that want to switch out. Um, Decidueye might also come as well, so we have Pursuit. Um, we have Final Gambit, um, Excelgore here. I forgot the number, but a good percent of a, a good percentage of his roster is under base speed, base HP 80. So we could click Final Gambit. I don't think we're gonna lead it, but it's gonna be um, a nice mid game play if he doesn't get rocks up. Um, it will allow me to outspeed stuff like Scarf Coco and take that thing out. Um, we could take out Beedrill. If I could trade my Excelgore for his Mega Beedrill, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, trading off one, trading off a low tier bug for a Mega Bug, I'm down for for that all day. We have Raikou, and this Raikou is actually um, going to be it's going to be Scarf, I believe. What Scarf allows me to do is, um, it's going to be Scarf, um, Volt Switch. So I could outspeed Mega Beedrill and, um, yeet out of there. We could, 
we could uh, volt switch out of there before it clicks drill run on me. So that's the game plan. And most likely my lead is going to be Primarina. Primarina has been one of my best Pokemon this season. One of my most favorite Pokemon to use. I wish when we had it before. Um, I forgot what season I had it before, but I was not using that thing right. But yeah, I'm loving this Pokemon and it's definitely coming this week. It's going to be my lead. Um, I say that because uh, James is someone who wants to lay up hazards turn one, I feel. So, um, with that said, he's going to lead either Heatran, Pipaldon, or Skarmory. And neither one of those Pokemon want to take a, a Specs Hydro Pump to the face. So, we're going to lead Primarina 100%, I feel. I'm damn confident about my lead. And I'm, damn, I'm pretty damn confident about this matchup. So, let's get it. Rah! All right, guys, we are back, and it's time to get corrupted. Um, what are we on? Week, yeah, week six against James. Here's our matchup. And like I said in the team builder, we just go off our lead of Primarina. I'm 100% committed to that as my lead. Uh, he brings some Pokemon I didn't expect. Uh, we fully expected the Mega Beedrill, the Heatran, and the Coco. Um, I kind of expected Inteleon. He actually needs to bring Inteleon, otherwise Glow Score shuts down most of his roster. Um, he brings Decidueye and Volbeat. So, um, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty concerned about Primarina. He knows I, I love bringing that thing. So, he's bringing both his Decidueye, I'm guessing Choice Band, and he's bringing Tapu Koko. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to leave Primarina here, and we'll see what he leaves. Once again, this is post-game. He leaves Inteleon, fast U-turn, so um, I go Moonblast. I was about to go Hydro Pump, and I hit him with a Moonblast. We drop him to, what, like 16% health, and he was Eject Button. So this was like a hit-and-run scenario where um, I guess he clicks Tailwind and he gets out. And he um, eject buttons out into his Tapu Koko. He does not like seeing Primarina. He wants to get rid of his threat. I don't think he expected me to lead it. So he brings out Tapu Koko. And um, like I want to expect a U-turn or a Volt Switch out here. But yeah, I'm not going to stay in. I'm, <laughs> I love Primarina this match. I love it in general. But I love this match. I'm going to switch out, obviously. So um, I could have stayed in, of course. But... Let's not do stupid plays. It's way too early in the game. We're up 6-6. Six, six. I could play more risky if I was like up 3 Pokemon or something. But it's a fresh game. We're going to switch out to Gliscor. He U-turns out, of course. No surprise there, right? Uh, he goes back into Teleon. I'm not going to stay him. We're going to go back into Primarina. Instead of taking the Ice Beam. And I go for Moonblast? No, Hydro Pump, actually. So, um... We do half damage. We land our Hydro Pump, which I'm grateful for. And we switch into our normal type Stack King. And we click, click Pursuit and get rid of the Sidrai. So once again, the Stack King is proving to be an excellent addition to my team. Uh, we switch out. I see a uh, Volbeat who's really passive. And I click SD, Sword Dance, I believe. No, actually, yeah, Brick Break. Brick Break. Um, I expected when I was team building... I expected Heatran to always be a switching into my Mawile. So we pack Brick Break, which um, it I don't think it ever Oko's unless he's like pure offensive. But if he's bulky, he loves Brick Break. But we do a, a, enough. We do enough here. I did some damage calcs at this point. And um, yeah, he has some bulk. So depending on the Heatran, a Brick Break and a Sucker Punch might be able to kill it, but I did not want to risk it. So, um, I believe Sucker Punch at this point was like 13 to 19% possible damage. So, um, I did not want to, you know, I gamble with my Crypto. I don't want to gamble with this. So, <laughs> we're going to switch out. I'm not going for Sucker Punch here. We switch out to Slack King. And he misses Magma Storm. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. I have Heatran in the RDL, my other league. Um, we knock it out. We knock it out. And look at this. We're, I believe we're a Salt Vest stacking here. And he has a physical Tapu Koko, which I found out was Choice Band based off the damage. 
He's doing all, he's in two hit KO range with ball charge. Um, he could two hit KO my bulky stacking, my max HP stacking. So I did some calcs. This ended up being choice band top of Coco. And I just say by the stacking, you know, he got us two kills. Um, we go into Gliscor. He's locked into um, Volt, ta um, Volt Tackle. Wild Charge. And we U turn out knowing he needs to switch out. And this time, instead of Brick Break, because there's no purpose, we SD up. We Sword Dance up. He goes for Thunder Wave instead of Tailwind. And we knock him out one kill from all well. Knock him out with a plus two play rough. Um, snipe Shot. But we knock it out second kill with a plus two to play rough and here we go I'm expecting my wild to go in right expecting him to fully go in and take out the last two Pokemon um, the para worked we got par fully paralyzed we would have do done a sucker punch and knocked out Beedrill right but uh, we get fully paralyzed and I believe he goes for a drill run here he goes drill run he knocks me out and at this point we just go Gliscor uh, he has a B drill. Gliscor may came mainly for B drill, right? I figured Mega B drill would come to this match, so we go into our Gliscor, and plus we know now that it's a choice band physical top of Coco. So from this point on, you could kind of guess what goes on here. We just spam Earthquake pretty much. So he loves this. He loves this Earthquake. We we click Earthquake twice more, I believe. So bam. And then I don't think Coco could ever do anything to Gliscor here besides Dazzling Gleam. So he goes for Brave Bird, only 32%. My Gliscor was like max, max HP, max defensive. So, anyways, that's the match. It went a lot better than I expected. Um, we didn't have to use Excel Gore or the Choice Scarf Raikou. So, that's all I have to say about the match, man. The introduction was uh, shorter. The introduction was longer than the actual match, so it is what it is. Um, I'm glad to get this win because we might be taking this L next week. Um, undefeated top. Most likely, I'm going to just come with some bullshit, like kind of throw this week. Um, and bring an experimental team. That way, for a playoff rematch, I know what might work and what might not work. So, that is the game plan. I wanted to win this week, that way I don't feel bad about next week. So, um, you guys, drop a like for me and James, and I'll see you on the next one. I have to include this bullshit on the video, man. What the fuck is going on here? Um, this is my team build, and um, let me explain this really quick. I'm very glad I didn't use this Raikou, because it would have been goofy, it would have been an awkward situation during the battle. But what happened here, guys, is um, at first, when I was first team building this um, for this matchup early on in the week, I had to call my sub Raikou. And then maybe a couple days ago, I opted to go Choice Scarf for the first time. Um, the Choice Scarf being so I could outspeed, uh, mainly outspeed Mega B Drill and Bolt Switch in front of it, get to safety instead of taking the drill run to the face. Um, so we did Choice Scarf. I put 80 speed EVs, which would allow me to outspeed Mega, max speed Mega B Drill. But I didn't take out Call Mine Sub. <laughs> so I had a Choice Scarf with Call Mine and Sub on here. And I'm barely realizing this right now. I'm producing the video, producing the episode. And I just thought I'd include this bullshit. So I'm very, very, very glad and fortunate we didn't have to bring out Raikou. But yeah. <laughs> uh, always double check your team build guys lesson learned <laughs>